So we're in the second week of our forward campaign. Everybody say forward. And this is our three-week, or excuse me, our three-week series to launch a three-year capital campaign initiative to build a new church. That's what we're doing, everybody. I don't know if you're as excited as I am, but I am more excited about building our new campus on Tiny Town Road than I was to do anything else we've done so far. We've added a kid's wing here. We built this building. And I'm very excited because we're not even building it for us. We're building it for people that haven't come to our church yet. Isn't that crazy? We're gonna give, we're gonna pray, we're gonna serve, we're gonna show up and invite people that have never even come to our church yet. But remember, that's what we did for many of you. Last week I asked a question, I said, how many of you started coming to our church after we built our Rossview Road building? Can you just raise your hand for me one more time? Hey, seven years ago, we started praying for you and said, let's build a building for them, people that haven't come yet. And you know, I remember in those days there were people in our church at the time that said, we don't need more seats. We got plenty of room. Pastor, meanwhile, I'm preaching five services a Sunday with my tongue hanging out of my mouth, just barely breathing. They're like, you got more? You can preach more? And so I said, yeah, but we're gonna build for people that aren't here yet. And it doesn't make sense when we think of it, but I want all of you who weren't here when we built this place to realize that we're gonna do it again. We're gonna build for people that haven't come yet. So I've titled my message today, All Play to Build God's House. It's an all play. My daughters and I, we have games at the house, you know, all kinds of board games and card games and stuff like that. And there's one game, I can't even remember the name of it, but, but essentially uh, you draw cards and then you do the action on the card and it'll say, pick one other person or find one other partner to do whatever, you know. Uh, but there's, one, there, there's a certain card that says all play. Everybody does this. And that's what we're doing as a church in this forward campaign. I'm inviting everyone in our church to participate with me and with us to build the next campus of our church. Like I said, I'm probably more excited about the launch of this next building and probably because of where it sits in town and how many of you it's gonna impact, but all the thousands of people that are moving into that area. But honestly, the reason is not just the brand, it's not just the name on the building, it's not even the design that gets me so excited. What excites me the most is I believe with all of my heart that the local church is the hope of the world. You gotta understand, we live in hopeless and dark times. I don't know if you watch the news or if you get on social media. How many of you got scroll finger calluses on your hands? You know what I'm talking about? Like our world is crazy and hard and painful and there's a lot going on. Threats of more wars and major wars. There's chaos in the discussions of our culture. There's just a lot of reasons to lose hope. In fact, hopelessness, suicidal ideation, anxiety, those things are on the rise but I am so convinced that the gospel preached through the local church is still powerful and effective to change lives. Can I hear an amen? It's through the church. The Bible says in Ephesians that it's through the church that the hope of the world, the gospel of Jesus should be made known. So look, we, we preach the gospel. We disciple people. We lead people to follow Jesus. We know that God uses the church. He uses you and me and us, not buildings, but it's the people who meet in those buildings and gather there. Let me just encourage you with something. God has been using your church. God has been using your church in a very powerful way to change our city, to change your family, to bring life change to so many people. And listen, what what we're building is for for God to change more people for the next generation and the next. I just wanna share with you some statistics and some stats that we've discovered about how God has used this church to do great things. Listen, listen, Because we are committed to building God's church, to leading God's church, to being gospel-oriented people, serving the Lord through his church, here's what we've seen just in the last five years. I've been the pastor 13, the church is 18 years old, but in the last five years only, we've seen multiple, now every weekend we see multiple thousands of people coming to our church, either in our physical locations at Austin P, at Rossview Road, and then thousands that join us online. 13 years ago, we barely had 60 people in our church. And today we see thousands, thousands of people, like five to 6,000 a weekend. We have given, this blew my mind, I didn't even know this. In the last five years, you know, we, 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 we live on tithes and offerings and we, we're very disciplined with our budget and we're good stewards of the money, but we give away at least a tithe, if not more. Last year we gave 22% away. We have given in the last five years $6.5 million to missions and church planters and organizations. That's what you have done because as a church, we want to make a difference. In the last five years, we've paid $5 million off of the debt of our Rossview campus. I started thinking about all the money we've given. We could have been totally debt free and everybody get a little, like a little Nissan. You know what I'm saying? Like we could have done all kinds of other stuff. 
But we, I'm, it was the cheaper car I could think of, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Sentra, 98 Sentra. But instead, we've invested in the missions and building churches. Through your church, over the last five years, we do quarterly serve days where we give an entire Saturday to serve our city. And if you add up all the people over five years, 6,000 people have put a red shirt on and said, I'm gonna go out and serve my city in Clarksville, Tennessee. Come on, Jesus, that is so awesome. Because we're committed to building a church, we currently see over 400 small groups meeting every week in our church. In the past year alone, in 2022 alone, we have counseled and had care appointments for 2,300 people. And my favorite stat, in the last five years alone, not 18 years, but in the last five years, we have baptized 1,652 people to the glory of God, people who are changed forever. Why am I telling you that? Why am I telling you that? Because it's the church that changes the world. I don't depend on government to change the world. I don't depend on social media to change the world. I don't depend on money to change the world. We believe the gospel changes lives and changes people. So what are we doing? We're building another church. Why? Because God has given us a mandate to go into all the world and make disciples and teach them what he's taught us. We live to lead people to be fully devoted followers of Christ. Why are we doing it now? Because Tiny Town Road is exploding in growth and we own the land with no debt because we wanna keep building and keep baptizing and keep dedicating babies and keep giving out more gummy bears. So we're building another church to reach more people for the gospel, and it's gonna be awesome. It's also gonna cost us something. I mean, if you know building is fun to talk about, but you gotta pay for it. It's gonna cost us $18 million. <laughs> That's the cost of building our next campus. When this building was built, our Rossview campus, it was about $110 a square foot to build. And I remember back then going, that is astronomical. Some, they're just taking advantage of us. Well, now it's $325 a square foot. And I wish to God it was $100 a square foot again. <laughs> That's just the cost of doing business. But how many of you know, God owns it all. And he gives to each one of us as he desires. And the Lord goes, now go be generous with what I've given you. And the plan of God is the people of God provide for the house of God. And listen, as God has collectively or individually given to every one of us, we get to now be a part as an all play event of giving back to the Lord to build a house for him. I don't know about you, but I'm so excited. I wanna show you an ex extraordinary story in the book of Exodus of how God's people got really excited to build the first church in the Bible. And their excitement got married to their generosity and man, it is the coolest story ever, and I dare you to repeat it for me. I want you to turn in your Bible with me to Exodus chapter 35, and I want us to look together at an outrageous display of generosity. The story is found in Exodus 35. Let me set it up for you. The Israelites have been wandering in the desert now. They don't have homes, permanent homes. They're living in tents. They're, there's like a million of them that have left Egypt, and they left with nothing. They were slaves for 400 plus years in Egypt as the Israelites. But God on the way out of Egypt said to them, he said, hey, on your way out, scoop up and gather up and plunder the, the Egyptians and get you some gold and some copper, get some plates. How I many of y'all got high school kids moving out the house and they don't even have any dishes, you know what I'm saying? And so they're moving out of Egypt and God says, plunder them on your way out. So on the way out of Egypt, they just grabbing stuff. But it's not like they had anywhere to spend it. It's not like they had a market in the desert. They have all this stuff that God tells them to take with them. And they're out in the wilderness for years after they've escaped Egypt. They're on their way to the promised land, which becomes a 40-year journey. And in the middle of that very difficult time, Moses makes an announcement to the people that God had spoken to him as the prophet and the pastor, that we are to build a house to meet with the Lord. We are to build a tabernacle to meet with God, and we're going to pay for it as a collective group by taking up an offering. Remember I said tithing is we bring our 10% to God, and then the offering is what we do after that. So we pick up in Exodus 35, and one of the first things I want you to see is we're gonna give an offering, but we wanna give because God stirs us to give. And I'm gonna give a caveat to that in just a second, but I wanna encourage you, we wanna give to this thing. We wanna give to our forward campaign. We wanna commit to a 36-month pledge and, and monthly contributions, not because you're feeling manipulated or arm-twisted or browbeat or yelled at by your pastor. No, never give to this church because you feel manipulated, never. We're not showing pictures of kids needing a building on the north side of town. We're not doing any of that. We want to give because God stirs us to give. 
because it's all his. He gave it all to us to begin with. So in Exodus 35, Moses has assembled all of the congregation and he's given some general instructions about Sabbath keeping and rest and work. And then in verse four, it says, now Moses said to all of the congregation of the people of Israel, notice he's speaking to everybody. That's what I'm doing for these three weeks. I'm trying to talk to our whole church family. Moses said to all the congregation of the people of Israel, this is the thing the Lord has commanded. Here's what God's telling us to do. Take from among you a contribution to the Lord. Notice who we're giving to. Our contribution is to the Lord. Whoever is of a generous heart, not whoever's got the most money, not whoever looks the best, not whoever's my closest friend, whoever is of a generous heart, let him or her bring the Lord's contribution. Moses has told the people, we're gonna build a church, guys. They've never built a tabernacle before. We're gonna build a place where God is gonna meet us. And Moses said, here's what God's telling us to do. And then he says, but every one of you has to be stirred in the heart to do it. And what we're gonna do is take up a contribution, a collection for the Lord. And then he goes on to say, so go to your house and get your gold and silver and bronze and find what you got. He tells them, bring some fine clothes and cloths and bring your best materials. He says, if you got some lamb's wool or some sheepskin or whatever, you got some ramp, tent, you know, leathers, you got whatever, just go get it and find what God's given you and let's bring it into the house. If you got jewelry, gemstones, bring all that. You can read it in Exodus 35. He even says, if you're a craftsman, you're a skilled laborer, you're an electrician, you're a plumber, you're a pipe fitter, whatever it is, if you're a craftsman, come ready to make this amazing house of worship for God. It's the first time in the Bible they're doing this. In verse 20, it says, all the congregation of the people departed from the presence of Moses. Now, I gotta tell you, there's pressure as a pastor. I'm worried, you know, if I say all this, I'm gonna split the church and people are gonna leave and be like, oh, he wants us to build, you know. But thankfully, they come back. That was a sad attempt at a joke, but none of y'all got it, apparently. <laughs> so the church leaves, and they all departed the presence of Moses, and it says, and they came. Look at this, you ready? Everyone whose heart was stirred Everyone whose spirit moved them. That's what I want for you. I, I want you to give because God's stirring you to give. I want you to serve at your church because God's stirring you to serve. I don't want anybody to do anything out of manipulation or coercion at this church. I don't want you attending because you feel obligated. I want you to come because God is stirring you. God is moving you. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying, everybody? I love you, church. I get to be your pastor, but I'm telling you, I don't want anybody to do it out of obligation. It says, everyone whose heart was stirred, everyone whose spirit moved, look at what they did. They came and they brought the Lord's contribution. That's what they called it. This is God's gift. This is God's money. To be used for the tent of meeting, to use for all of its services, to be used for holy garments. They said, we're gonna, we're gonna build a building. We're gonna build the offices. We're gonna buy the chairs. We're gonna buy the suit for the pastor. Come on, Jesus. Let the Lord use you. Notice what they didn't do. They didn't pass a bucket. They didn't pass a bag. They didn't even do online giving and scan this QR code. Now, we are gonna do that, just so you know. <laughs> but instead, Moses said, you go pray. You go meet with God. You go to your house and then come back and bring it. And here's what they did. They start bringing this offering and they just drop it at the building site. I mean, can you imagine as a contractor showing up to a job site and there's just a pile of gold on the ground? There's a pile of goat hair on the ground it's coming. It happens, all right? We are not collecting goat hair, by the way, for this project. Moses said, just bring it. You say, not today. He said, just bring it to the building site and drop it off. Let's see what we can all do together. And so everyone who was willing and had a right heart, a stirred heart, that's what I want for you. Please listen this week. And next week, as we come to Commitment Sunday and we're making pledges to the Lord for three years, I want you to ask God and I want you to let him move and stir in your heart. And here's what I promise you. If you will ask God, he will tell you. You wanna know one way to not hear from God? Don't talk to him. But if you'll ask God, okay, Lord, my pastor wants me to pray about what to do with this building. God, what do you want from me? And just sit and be still and wait, be silent before the Lord. I believe with all my heart, if you'll ask God, here's the question you go. God, what do you want me to give that you've already given me? What do you want me to give to build a house where people are gonna come meet you? I feel like the Lord will go, oh yeah, I'm all about that. If you'll ask him, he'll tell you. Then you get to obey God and do what he's stirred in your heart. Verse 22 says, so they came, both men and women. Here's what that means. They didn't, not just the men of the family, it was a family event. The men and the women came together. Look at this. All who were of a willing heart brought brooches, 
I'm talking bringing brooches back. Hey, come on, y'all talk. Let's bring the brooch back on a Sunday. Can we get like some little gold dragonflies up in here, ladies? <laughs> little ladybugs or something, I don't even know. But here's what they did. They went and found what they had. They found brooches and earrings and signet rings and armlets and all sorts of gold. Hey, some of y'all got gold teeth you ain't even chewing on anymore. Just let's have it. Let's go. Be creative. <laughs> you got other teeth. Chew on the front. Anyway, all sorts of gold objects. <laughs> Every man dedicating, look at this, dedicating an offering of gold to the Lord. Everyone who possessed blue and purple and scarlet yarns and fine linen. Here's the deal with this. The, the, the yarns and linen don't build the building, but they build the blankets and the cloths and the, 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 the tapestries on the wall and these fine linens are gonna be created. The women who, the, the, the people who possess blues and purple and scarlet yarns of fine linen, goat's hairs, tanned ram skins, goat skins brought them. Everyone who could, everyone who can make a contribution of silver or bronze brought it as the Lord's. I want you to remember like, like this right here, when I give it away, it, it was given by the pastor. It's fine to give it back to others, right? It wasn't even yours to begin with. And that's the attitude they had. They're bringing it as a contribution to the Lord. Then it says, everyone who possessed acacia wood or any use in the work, like they, the, this is the craftsmen, the woodworkers, they brought their skill. Look at this, every skillful woman spun with her hands and they all brought, notice the all language over and over, all brought what they had spun in blue and purple and scarlet yarns. Can you imagine how beautiful this tabernacle would have been? All the women whose hearts were stirred to use their skill spun the goat's hair. Look at this. I want you to see what happens. Moses simply puts the vision out. And Moses says, this is what God's telling us to do. So here's what I'm asking you to do. Listen, as your pastor, I'm telling you, I believe with all my heart, God's asked us to build this campus. I just believe that. And by the way, I didn't come up with that arbitrarily after a good night of pizza eating. This is prayerful, seeking the Lord. The confirmation of multiple witnesses with the covering and the protection of our overseers and our board have all agreed this is the will of God for our church. So I just want you to know I can confidently stand before you and know that the leadership of our church are in agreement about this. But now it's for us to participate in. And I want you to know why. Because we wanna lead a church to lead people to be fully devoted followers of Jesus. And folks that don't come to Christ yet, don't know Jesus, don't come to our church yet, we're building it for them. And it's an all play. And I'm asking you to ask the Lord, God, stir me. I mean, look at what they did. They went back to their house and rather than scatter and split the church and get mad at Pastor Moses, they go digging in their drawers and digging in their boxes and they're looking under pillows to say, what can we give to God? This is an opportunity to be generous and do something great for God. We're building the first temple ever in the history of God's people. If they could make something helpful, they'd make it. If they could give something significant, they gave it. If they could serve in a way that was helpful, they serve. The attitude was not, what do they want from me? The attitude was, what can I do to make this happen? And it's the right attitude for us. The modern equivalent for you guys and me would be like, hey, we're gonna build a church on Tiny Town, so let's go through our house. Let's go through our accounts. Let's go look at our stock portfolio. Let's go look at our 401k. Hey, let's go empty some change bags. Let's go throw some stuff on eBay. All of us have way too much stuff in our closets. Let's have a garage sale. Let's give like crazy. Let's donate watches, jewelry, some gold teeth. I wasn't kidding, y'all. How amazing would it be to let generosity look like it did in the book of Exodus? They were so excited, look at me, they were so excited about a mobile church. And we're gonna build a permanent church. Look here, we got our Austin P crowd watching this service. Y'all know the grind of set up, tear down. They're setting up, tearing down a tabernacle in the desert, y'all. And they got so excited to build a portable church. How excited are you about building a permanent spot on Tiny Town Road? Man, I'm saying, don't, don't just come back next week and go, man, I got 20 bucks I can drop in a bucket. I want you to ask the Lord to stir you and say, God, what can I do that's significant? Maybe I'm gonna add this to my budget every month for the next 36 months. In fact, I'm asking you to do that for the next three years to incorporate the building of God's house into your budget. And look at this, the leaders brought. I want you to understand something. Every staff member has been asked to participate. Every board member has been challenged to participate significantly. My wife and I, 
are all in on this. I promise you, there ain't a team member in the leadership at our church that has not been pushed and challenged. The leaders brought onyx and stones and stones for the set and the ephod and the breast piece. These are the pieces of worship and the things like, this is like buying the pulpit and the preaching Bible and the iPads to teach from. This is all the things needed to do ministry. All the men and women, look at this statement. All the men and women, the people of Israel, whose hearts moved them to bring anything for the work that the Lord had commanded. Again, God is calling us to do this and I want you to be stirred for this. They brought it as a free will offering. You know what that means? No strings attached. I have no obligations. Hey God, this is your money. This is your offering. You gave it to me to to begin with. It's all yours freely. I give it back to you. And it wasn't just for building the temple. They brought it to fill out all the ministry, the pantry stocked. I want you to notice God directed Moses. Moses directed the people and the folks went nuts giving to this thing. I'm not Moses. I don't know if you knew that. I'm not. But I am your pastor. And I just believe this is the next step for us. And I'm asking everybody in our church. When Moses called it out, he said, I'm asking everybody to bring your gold and your silver. And here's what we'll see. We're gonna build this building at the speed of your generosity. We're gonna build God's church at the pace of your giving. I'm so excited about this, y'all. My, my, my prayer, my hope is that 36 months from now, we will have been in this building for over a year and we'll be debt-free because our church gave so generously to it. How many of you can agree with me on that, anybody? We're gonna be debt-free on this 18 million. 18, million. we'll be like, 18 million? Y'all remember when buildings was just 325 dollars a square foot? Give me them days, Jesus. $782 a square foot? Now the next building might be 35 million. Praise God. Hey, God's got all the jelly beans. Gummy bears, it's all his money. I want you to jump down to verse, chapter 36, verse two, watch what happens. So now they're building, they brought all this contribution and they're building the tabernacle, a mobile church. Go Google the look of the tabernacle in Exodus, it's amazing. And it says, Moses called Bezalel and Aholiab. Any pregnant mamas need a baby name, here you go, right here's some good one. <laughs> I'm just waiting for one day somebody to come up to me and be like, here is, you know, Methuselah, I've named it out of the Bible. Oh, holy ab. Moses called, these are the contractors, the general contractors. He calls Bezalel and Aholiab and every craftsman in whose mind the Lord had put skill. I wanna tell all of you, it's the Lord who's given you the skills to do the job you have, to do what you do. Anyway, everyone whose heart was stirred to come and do the work. Moses said, hey, I need all of my skilled laborers. I need all my craftsmen. We need the money and the gold and the, the, the yarn and whatnot, but I need some skilled workers to help us build this place. And they received from Moses all of the contribution that the people of Israel had bought for doing the work on the sanctuary. So the contractors are gonna come to the the pastor and say, hey, pastor, great, you've hired us as contractor. We need the money to do the work. We gotta order the steel. We gotta get some screws and some drywall. How many of y'all know that's how building works? (laughs) So I got tons of vision and we've hired a general contractor. We're gonna hire a ton of local subs, but they wanna get paid because they don't just have steel coming out of their ears. They gotta order it and pay for it. So Bezalel and Aholiab come to Moses and they're like, okay, we're ready to build. We need the money. Watch what happens. So they came and received from Moses all of the contribution that the people of Israel had brought for doing the work on the sanctuary. And they still, they, the people, kept bringing Moses free will offerings. Look at this, every morning. Can you imagine the excitement of the people of Israel where they're like, man, I gave some armlets and some brooches, but I got back to the house and I found some goat hair, y'all. I made some, I brought more of an offering and I'm bringing another offering the next day. And every morning people are bringing more. We're building God's house. I can't believe it, man. We're gonna build God's house. Here, have a camera. You need some gummy bears? Come on, let's go. And the excitement was overwhelmed. They kept giving, giving, giving time and again. And listen, some of you, you're gonna, all of you, I'm praying, are gonna pledge to give monthly to this program. And you're gonna give time and time again. And there's gonna be about 18 months in and you're gonna go, man, I don't think they still need that. And I'm kind of tired of giving. No, 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 stay faithful to giving again and again until this 36 months is over. Look what happened. They kept bringing the free will offering every day. Moses didn't have to ask again because now the people were excited about doing it and they were committed to doing it and they just kept giving and giving. And a spirit of generosity swept through the camp. 
Hearts were moved by God's word. Hearts were inspired by the need and the vision and the opportunity. And they joined in with an outrageous display of generosity. I love this. It's amazing. They didn't just give once. They didn't just give an offering. They gave a pledge and they gave a commitment to give over and over again every day. Instead of people saying, what's the minimum I need to give? People are saying, how much more can I give? I mean, I want you guys to listen when I say this. We're literally building a church that's gonna change heaven. Like, we're not just doing a building. Are you kidding me? It's drywall, steel, and carpet. Ain't nothing sacred about that place, just like this place. It's when we gather and the Lord meets us here that it changes eternity. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying, everybody? And let me tell you how much they gave. This is crazy. We did some Googling here, a little calculating to see how much, and we didn't calculate the value of ram skin and goat fur and all that kind of stuff. But we did look at gold, silver, and bronze. And it says that they brought in 2,193 pounds of gold. That would be the, how many talents of gold they brought in into pounds. In today's money, the Israelites who were orphaned in the wilderness, they didn't have houses, they didn't have restaurants, they didn't have banks, they didn't have anything. They just had plunder from Egypt, went scrounging and scraping for cushion change and brought what would be today $70 million worth of gold. That's what I'm talking about right there. In silver, they brought 2,500 pounds of silver, which today would be worth $3 million. In bronze, bronze needs to come up in value. I'm just saying, this is sad. <laughs> More pounds of bronze, that should be a comma, 5,300 pounds of bronze worth 14,000. Let me just tell you just in metals how much money. They brought $73 million in today's money. I started thinking about this. I'm like, they built a $73 million portable church in the desert. I'm not that upset about an $18 million permanent building with air conditioning and toilets. I'll tell you right now, we're gonna have a way better sound system than those dudes did. They had a shofar and an angry prophet. That's all they had. Everybody listen up. No, we're gonna have microphones like this right here. We're gonna have screens. $73 million. And listen, once they got to that part, this is when it gets real crazy. This is when God shows up. This is when, listen, if we'll all do this, hear me when I say this. I'm not after your money. Man, I'm after the vision of what God's given us to do. And I'm after everybody doing something, doing something significant, doing something like crazy, right? Watch this. When everyone participated, God brought this massive surprise. So here's what happens. Chapter 3, 36, verse 6 and 7. It says, so remember Bezalel and Aholi, I've come to Moses. They're like, we need all the money to do all the work. So they kept bringing free will offerings every morning so that every craftsman who was doing every sort of task on the sanctuary could come, each from the task that he was doing. So here's what that says. No subs had to wait on resources. No contractor had to wait on more money to come in. The plumbing guys didn't have to say, I'm out of plumber's glue. I don't know what they do in plumbing, obviously. The, the drywall fitters didn't have to wait on drywall screws. They gave so much that every sub had everything they need to do the work immediately. There was no delay in construction costs. There was no project halt because it, everything they needed, every sort of task of the sanctuary came in. And then they had so much money. Watch this. They said to Moses, the people have brought much more than enough for doing the work that the Lord has commanded us to do. Here's what the GC said. Hey, Moses, we got too much money. Have you ever met a contractor who says that? I mean, if you hire a contractor to build a house, $500,000, and then you show up with a briefcase full of hundos for $650,000, that contractor's going, we're building a $650,000 house. Man, we're gonna marble everything. We're gonna marble the floors. We're gonna marble the walls. We're gonna marble the sinks. We're gonna do it all in marble. Or my fee just got hired, you know, something. These contractors, because they knew the heart of God, they knew this was God's call. They tell Moses, hey, they brought too much money. They brought way too much. So watch what happens. This blows me away. This is God's surprise. So then Moses gives the command and the word was proclaimed throughout the entire camp. Just one chapter ago, he's cast in vision. And one chapter later, Moses says, you guys have responded so well. 
Moses gives command, the word was proclaimed throughout the whole camp, let no man or woman do anything more for the contribution of the sanctuary. In other words, he said, nobody give any more. Hey, church, I dare you, I double dog dare you to make me the second pastor in history that ever has to come back and say, hey, life point. Man, we said it was 18, y'all gave 20. Please stop giving to the contribution to build LifePoint Church. Can it be in Jesus' name, everybody? But here's how it'll work. If we'll all do it, if we'll all be stirred by God, if we'll all contribute, I don't believe it's God's will that one family stroke a check for 18 million. I believe it's God's will that thousands of families would hear from God and be stirred by the spirit and make a pledge for 36 months. There's a discipline there. There's a we're all in commitment here. And I believe it's God's will that as all of us are stirred by God and do what he tells us to do, that more than enough will come in. Can I hear an amen from the church? Come on, say, let it be God. Please, I dare you to make me the second pastor in history to tell you to stop giving. And I I promise you, this is not a money grab. This ain't even a sermon about money. If all you hear is Pastor Mark's talking a lot about money, you're not listening. I'm talking about vision. I'm talking about lost people going to heaven. Can you imagine the day we open this building being debt-free so we don't have to worry about a bill or an outstanding debt and we can hit the ground running on Tiny Town Road and be winning people to Jesus and discipling people and baby dedicating kids and giving out more gummy bears. Come on, Jesus that we are so ready to go to build this house to the glory of God. I believe it's the plan of God that the people of God provide for the house of God. I believe everything the Lord wants for our church, he's given it to you in cupfuls. And he says, hey, be a tither and, and now be a giver. You got plenty. Be a giver. And if every one of us will do something with God's money, because that's whose it is anyway, right? I'm telling you, I just know with all my heart, we're going to see this happen, and it's going to happen, it's going to be done. Can I ask you to please pray, 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 and ask the Lord to stir you. Every one of you should have received our pledge card. If you don't have it, it's in the seat back in front of you. Can everyone grab a copy of this right now? I can see you not moving. Like, that is not helpful. (laughs) I'm looking right at you. Could you all grab it? (laughs) You ain't slick, I'm watching you. I don't want anybody to fill it out, don't grab a pen, no clicky clacks, nothing. But I want you to look at the card. And I I want you to see there are real dollar amounts because how many of you know Bezalel and Aholiab are coming to build this thing? And steel costs money and drywall costs money and sound systems cost a lot of money. And And it's all God's money. We're gonna do it together. But if you look at the numbers on this card, I want you to notice, some of you are looking at numbers and you're like, I've never given that kind of money to my church before. Well, uh, first of all, I want you to remember it's over three years. So 36 months, in the parentheses, it tells you kind of what's the per month for 36 months. Here's what I know. If everyone in our church, every family, did any of these numbers, we would have more than enough. But I left you an other in case you wanna do more. You're welcome. God may stir you to do more, and that's fine too. I don't want to. Oh, you got some gold teeth coming? Bless God. <laughs> Melt it down. But but here's what I want you to do every day this week, because next Sunday we're doing Commitment Sunday, and I'm asking everybody: don't skip church next week. Don't catch the flu. No, no, no. We have a church. <laughs> Remember, I said Moses tells them, and they all scatter. It's every pastor's greatest fear. Now come back next week. And bring your card filled out. But I want you to pray every day this year, this week. Lord, everything I have belongs to you already. How would you want me to give your money back to build your church, back to build your house? And I know if every family would do this, something on here or more, man, we'll have more than enough. Jesus said, who by the way is our king, he is our boss, he's our master. He said it like this, don't store up for yourselves treasures on earth. By the way, if you notice, the older we get, the more stuff we get, and the more we treasure it, and the more we try to protect it with security cameras 
and safes and passcodes and diversifying portfolios. I'm, I'm guilty of all of this, by the way. I'm talking to myself, especially my wife. She's real greedy. Just kidding. But the, the, here's what we do. We store up for ourselves treasures on earth. Jesus said, don't do that. Because moth and rust can destroy it. Thieves can break in and steal it. The market can crash. It can all be gone. He said, rather, store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where nothing can destroy and nobody can steal it. Here's what I want to ask you to do this week. I want you to pray, God, everything I have is yours. What do you want me to do with it? And then I want you to go look in your treasure piles and ask God, well, what do you want me to do with this? I've been treasuring it. I've been storing it up. I've been a good steward, God. I've been a saver. I've been fiscally responsible, God. I want you to just ask the Lord, what do you want with this? Maybe God told the Israelites to plunder out of Egypt because he knew in 10 years, we're gonna build a house where I can meet you in person. Maybe God gave you treasure because he knew that you'd be a part of building something where people would come and meet Jesus. Maybe. That's when you ask God. I gotta close the sermon, I'm out of time. Did you get anything out of this today, everybody? Are you feeling challenged? I don't want anybody to feel yelled at or hurt or angry or anything. I just want you to be challenged. Last thing I gotta say, and then you gotta go get your kids with kindness. Praise the Lord, bring them gummy bears. Come back to the tabernacle. Moses finished the work. So the next four chapters are them building it. And it is ornate and beautiful and way fancier than what we're building. Let me tell you right now. We ain't got a single ox, goat, hair, skin, tan, leather stuff anywhere in our building. Maybe we should have a whole wall of just purple yarn and goat skins. I don't know. But it says, Moses finished the work. Very next verse. And then the cloud of glory covered the tent. Look at this. It's my prayer. The glory of the Lord filled the house they built for him. The glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. And Moses was not even able to walk into it because the glory of God was so thick. Can you imagine we grand open that building and the presence of God would fill that place and everyone who comes will just get pummeled by the love of God and broken in their sin because of the grace and the mercy and the presence of Almighty God. We're not doing this for us. We're doing it to those, so that people can meet with God. And the glory of the Lord would be so thick on that campus and this campus and Austin P and online that God would be met and he would be known and the glory of God would fill the house that we build to the glory of Jesus. Man, the temple they built with their outrageous display of generosity was a place where God met them. A glory cloud filled the temple. By the way, we wanna introduce people to a life full of the Spirit. That's every day for you, Christians. A building is a tool, but it's a tool God uses to introduce people in the church to Jesus Christ. Lord, let it happen. God, we pray today that you would stir our hearts like you did the Egyptian, the Israelites in the wilderness that you would stir our hearts to do something crazy, significant, and generous to the glory of God. God, I pray that you would move among us, stir our hearts, stir our minds, stir our gifts. God, call us to evaluate every part of our lives, our treasure, our, our passions, our gifts, our skills. And Lord, that we would come away this week saying, Lord, everything I have belongs to you. It's from you. It's yours. God, what would you have me do with what you've given me. And I pray like we watch the Israelites, every one of them was stirred somehow. I pray that you'd stir every one of us because we wanna build a house that you'd be proud of. We wanna build a house where the glory of the Lord meets your people and where thousands will come to faith, millions will be given away, thousands will be baptized, discipled, changed forever to the glory of God. Would you pray this with me? Come on and say it. Say, God, I belong to you. Come on, say it for real. God, I belong to you. I believe in Jesus, that he died for me so I can live for him. I'm all yours. I'm all in forever in Jesus' name. Say, Lord, fill me, speak to me, stir me, and use me. In Jesus' name I pray, to God be the glory. Come on, let's celebrate today, Life Point. Amen, everybody.